Uh, it's about time I finally get to this idiot. You see, when it came to workers, holy trinity of blasters they released until the seagull came out and suddenly everything was irrelevant, this was the only one that I missed. I covered the Harrier, I covered the Phoenix 2.0, and I completely forgot about the Nightingale. And now that I temporarily have my hands on this stupid nugget again, I can finally address why I never got to it. <coughs> it's way too loud to the point where it hurts my ears and it hurts my ears to a point where i can't stand using the damn thing for more than like 15 minutes at a time but it's here right now i've been using it all afternoon we're gonna review it because i don't know if i'm ever gonna get another chance to So I think this came out in 2022 and was a release out of Worker, which is kind of their belated answer to the Strife, and in some ways is quite a bit better than the Strife, but in a lot of ways is worse, and in a lot of ways it's just its own completely separate thing that has nothing to do with the Strife, making that comparison not only irrelevant, but kind of offensive. But all that you folks need to know about this blaster before we get into the nitty gritty teeny tiny details that make my fingers do this, is the fact that this thing is a magazine fed semi-automatic flywheel blaster so with all that said let's start with the design i don't really like it that much i think that it is just way too big and simultaneously too tiny and it also looks way too much like a form of firearm especially from this angle where the orange is a little bit obstructed without the orange god that's that's intimidating as hell just to see and it, it actually bland this video with the demonetization mark so i'm just gonna put that back so oh my god look at the orange it's so orange Look at the orange! But the thing about this design is that it is as compact as it can possibly be. Pretty much every single square inch of this has a reason to be there, except for this. I don't know why that's there, but it doesn't really matter because it still gets the job done and you can just remove this thing if you really want to, if you're a psychopath and don't like grip guards for whatever reason, but it doesn't really matter. What about the ergonomics? It's got a grip and it feels exactly like the Harriers, but without all of the weight, so I would say that this is probably better than the Harrier. How does this stupid dingus work? Well, you take a magazine that at the time of this blaster's release was completely and utterly proprietary, you take it and you shove it into the grip until it clicks like that. Then you pull the trigger and the blaster deafens you <coughs> and fires a single dart. And then you can do it again. <coughs> This blaster's biggest deal is the fact that it is using micro flywheels, which are incredibly tiny and spin up unbelievably fast. Like so fast to the point where even if you pull the trigger fast, by the time the trigger hits the rear position and the pusher shoves a dart into the flywheels, it will be almost at max RPM, if not completely fully revved up. Which means that you don't have to worry about revving the blaster up or any of that. You just pull the trigger and it does what you need it to do. Pretty effectively too. And just in case you want to fidget with the trigger without having to deafen yourself. On and off switch. Pretty good implementation of an on and off switch. And that leads me on to the smoothness of operation. The trigger feels very good. It's got quite a bit of pull to it considering it's a semi-auto blaster that is also revving on the trigger pull. So I don't mind the trigger pull being so long and it is very, very smooth and crispy. As for the mag release, it is right here. It's this big button with a happy face on it, which makes you happy to be taking the mag out. You push the button and it mag drops. And it is very smooth to put the mag in as well with a little bit of flared edges around to make mag loading just a little bit easier. Though if you have any form of firearm training on how to load magazines in, you'll be fine. Why is there an 18 rounder here? Get out. And because I know every single person on the planet is gonna ask, Yup, it works with Venom Pro mags, and it doesn't look half bad with the Venom Pro mag. At least it would if it actually matched the color scheme. You can get these blasters in different colors, so I don't know. Maybe there's this color scheme that looks better with the Venom Pro mag. I can't speak today if you guys couldn't tell. I'm stuttering a lot more than usual, but just forgive me there. <laughs> So what mod potential does this potato of a blaster have? 
I don't know. I mean, it's a thing that you can do whatever you really want with it. It takes 3S. You could change the motors out if you want even louder ones or if you want ones that aren't going to hurt your ears as much. My biggest complaint with this blaster is the battery tray. It is microscopic. It is barely big enough for the recommended battery, and there's no way that you're going to be able to fit every 3S in the world in there. It's going to be very tight for most batteries, including the smallest one that you can reasonably put in there, which is conveniently the one that's in there right now. And I guess that's everything to say. I mean, there's no reason to say anything else. I mean, no, 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 no. I mean, there's nothing else that I need to say about this blaster. No, no, stop it. No, no, no! Hey, but test, the Venom Pro came out this year, and the Venom Pro is the exact same thing, except it's also fully automatic, and it already comes with a battery and the thumb screw, so you don't even have to deal with nearly any of the nonsense. Plus, it's a little bit cheaper, which means it's obviously a better value, which means it's obviously a better product. Hey, I get it. The Venom Pro is really cool. But attempting to compare the Venom Pro to the Nightingale is completely unfair, and I would even say it's unfair to compare this to the Nightingale 2.0, which is fully automatic, because not only are these two blasters trying to accomplish different goals, they are subjected to different audiences and are appealing to different audiences as well. The only problem is that there's so many awkward similarities between the two that they were just kind of lumped into the same category, even though it really doesn't fit in the same category. This is a LiPo using flywheel semi-automatic blaster with a dual stage trigger that features an on-off switch that completely toggles the mechanism, not just blocking the trigger from being pulled, and is appealing to people who have been in the Nerf hobby for a long time and want a nice sidearm that they can holster. While this one is a fully automatic mag and grip rev trigger enable blaster, which seems to be appealing to the casualist audience who wants a nice full auto blaster as a sidearm. I get it. They look the same. They're the same size. They're about the same price, whatever. They're trying to do different things. And as such, I'm not going to compare the Nightingale to the Venom Pro besides the fact that it uses the same mags and is about the same size, except the Venom Pro has a slightly bigger forehead than the, the Nightingale, but whatever, who gives a crap? If you're in the market for a small sidearm that also doubles as a kind of strifoid thing that's magging grip and has a dual stage trigger, this is one of the better options that you can pick up. But if you're a casualist, oh my goodness, I think that it's definitely better for you to get the Venom Pro because it's just the same thing, but better. No, I think that if you are in the market for something like this, this is what is going to fill your needs. If you're not in the market for something like this, it's probably not a good idea to get one of these because it only comes with one mag, it doesn't come with a lipo, and you have to get a lipo charger for it. With all that said, if you do want to get this blaster, I will link it in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. Bye!